Welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're talking about arguments for the existence of God, and this time we'll discuss the argument from motion. Premise 1. Objects at rest remain at rest unless acted upon by an external force. Therefore, all motion in any object comes from something else which moves it, like a hen moving a rock. Premise 2. The process of moving things, causing other things to move, can't be infinite in the past, because without a first cause of motion, nothing would have started that process to begin with. Premise 3. Motion exists. Conclusion. Therefore, all motion must come from a first cause of motion, a prime mover, which moves other things, but isn't moved by anything. Now, let's look at the evidence for the premises. Premise 1. There's almost no need to defend this premise since it's part of Newton's first law of motion. Premise 2. In order for a process of motion to begin, it needs to be begun by something. The first premise states as much, and the second one just applies that to the motion of all things in general. As long as this reasoning is sound, it follows that the existence of motion proves that there must be a first mover which moves other things and isn't moved by anything. Premise 3. I've never heard anyone try to deny this. As long as a person can listen to this video, it proves that motion exists, since that's what a video does. It's a motion picture. Conclusion To explain why this conclusion follows, it may be helpful to give an example. Suppose you have a railroad track arranged in a circle so that trains travel around it in a circuit. Now suppose you have a single train, which covers the entire track with its many cars. As long as the engine is powerful enough to pull all those cars, it can move the whole train along the tracks for as long as necessary. However, if there were no engine, no first cause of the train's motion, and all you had were a series of cars linked together in a circle, not one of them would ever move. they just sit there like boxes in a warehouse and not do anything. The same is true of the universe. Without a first cause of motion, nothing in the universe would ever move. This seems like a very good argument. What kinds of objections could be brought against it? Objection 1. Even though it seems like all motion comes from previous motion, there might be some motion somewhere in the universe that doesn't. Reply. Maybe, but we haven't encountered it, so at the moment this is really just a guess rather than a counter-argument. Until we find some actual evidence that some motion doesn't require an external force, we're entirely justified in believing premise 1 on the basis of induction, drawing a general conclusion based on the available samples. Objection 2. Past infinities aren't impossible, because you could just have a motion that's always existed. Reply. Aside from the train reasoning that I just provided, there are other reasons not to believe in past infinities. One of the best, I think, is that you can't have an actually infinite number of finite things, and past events are finite things. Therefore, you can't have an actually infinite number of past events, and that's what you'd need if you wanted to claim that motion has always existed. You could suggest that motion has a necessary existence, but I can't even imagine how a claim like that could be defended. Objection 3. Even if the argument establishes that a first cause of motion is needed, there's no reason to think that cause is God. It might just refer to the Big Bang, or something else like that. Reply. The Big Bang theory starts with matter moving, which means that it's not a sufficient source of motion. But in any case, the first cause would need to be voluntary anyway, since it moves other things and isn't moved by anything. Does it move other things constantly? Clearly not, or else more motion would have been constantly generated by it throughout history on a cosmic scale. Obviously, we're dealing with a voluntary agent, which chooses to create the motion of the universe at a certain point, and then not create more motion afterwards, and just let the motion that already exists run its course. So it follows that a prime mover of some sort must exist, which is a good piece of evidence to indicate that God exists. Next time... Can the nature of cause and effect teach us anything about God? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.